Hi, I'm Keith Dowen. I'm the Assistant Curator of Arms and Armour here at the Royal Armouries. I'm here with the snails and dragonflies breastplate, and this is Up in Arms. So this is one of my favourite breastplates here at the Royal Armouries. Um, it's unusual for a number of reasons. Firstly, its shape. Um, we term it a peas cod breastplate. Uh, now the peas cod doublet was an extremely fashionable piece of male clothing during the late 16th century. It appeared at around 1560, but didn't really assume it this more exaggerated form until the 1580s and 1590s. Now the term peas cod is an old word for pea pod and the belly, if you look closely at this um, breastplate, the belly looks like a full pea pod when it's full of uh, peas. Now you might think this is a really strange shape to, um, to wear as an item of clothing, but it's designed to uh, give the impression that the man who's wearing it is well fed and so his stomach is, is hanging over his waist. Now, not everyone approved of this style of doublet, and actually we know that some of the more Puritan members of um, Elizabeth's circle actually complained that this uh, monstrously deformed uh, the male shape. However, it was extremely fashionable. Around the base of this breastplate, you can see this sort of scallop-like tabs, and we call these picadils. And the whole breastplate is designed to look like a textile doublet. And I think it's really important to mention that all high quality armor is designed to imitate clothing in some way. Um, just because it's made of rigid plates doesn't mean it's not subject to the same fashion styles that you would see in textile. I think we all know the proverb, clothes maketh the man. Well, armor certainly maketh the man as well you wanted to appear fashionable at court and indeed on the battlefield. And it might be surprising to know that uh, this particular breastplate is actually made to be bulletproof. So it's designed to be worn on the battlefield, despite the high level of decoration. It was probably made in Antwerp in Belgium in around 1583. And the reason why we know that is that this breastplate belongs to a group of armors that we call the snail and dragonflies armors because of the decoration on it. And I'll explain that in a minute. Regarding the dating, uh, the Royal Armouries has a number of pieces of armor of this group. And I have a gorget here, which is designed to be worn around the neck. And right on the front of the gorget is the date 1583. So we can be relatively confident that all of these pieces, even if they don't match exactly, uh, date to 1583 or, or thereabouts. And this provides a good clue for who this armour was actually made for. Originally, all of these pieces of armour came from uh, Penshurst down in Kent. And that was the home of the Sydney family. The most noted member of the Sydney family was Sir Philip Sydney who was a Elizabethan courtier, soldier, and poet. And he was actually killed fighting in the Netherlands against the Spanish in 1586. There were quite a few Englishmen fighting over in the Netherlands as part of a treaty that Elizabeth I had arranged with the States General in the Netherlands in their war against Spain. Um, it may well have been made for Sir Philip Sidney. Unfortunately, we don't know that for certain. It's also possible it was made for his brother, Robert Sidney, who was the governor of Flushing. So let's get into the detail of the breastplate. As you can see, it is covered with etched decoration. Now etching is a chemical process in which a resist, often wax, is either um, applied all over the, the area that you want to decorate, and then a design scratched through and then bathed in a weak acid, or you can paint the resist on. Um, in some cases, you can use both techniques on a piece of armour to um, create more complex designs with different levels of depth. On this breastplate, although the, some of the design is difficult to see now, originally it would have been a lot crisper. And certainly the areas that aren't etched 
in the background would have been much darker as well. So you would have had quite a strong visual contrast between the um, metallic silver color of the etched decoration and then the black of the background. Now this style of etching is quite typical for um, the Low Countries and Antwerp in particular. There are a number of armors around the country and also in portraits which show them very similar decorative schemes. So turning to our attention to the main scheme, we have in the center uh, a strap work cartouche which surrounds uh, figures fighting on horseback. And the use of strap work is quite typically Flemish of the period. But we also have lots of other little details. So below the cartouche, we have a figure of Mars, which is unfortunately a little bit indistinct today, but you can just make out his arm holding a shield. Now the whole lower part of the breastplate actually comes from a print by the French engraver and medalist Etienne Delorme. And his designs were used very widely on armor of the period. Some of the design has been altered slightly in order to fit the contours of the breastplate, but it is quite recognizable as one of his designs. Now the use of prints in designing arms and armor was really quite widespread during the 16th century. And although we don't know some of the origins of the rest of the decorative schemes, we can be fairly sure that they too would have been, would have derived from um, pattern books and other prints of the period. Now you might think, why do we call this the snails and dragonflies group? Well, if you look very carefully, there are small snails making their way up some of the strap work and also dragonflies uh, perching on the strap work and other trophies on the breastplate. Now, at first you might think that's a very unusual design to incorporate into a piece of armor, but actually it's quite typical of the grotesque mannerist style that you see on armor in the second half of the 16th century, particularly from Antwerp. So other decorative elements that you can find on this breastplate are trophies of arms, decorative designs with snarling animals' heads, other birds such as storks, and also winged cherubs, which feature both on the lower half of the breastplate and at the top. And there's also a figure at the top who's blowing a couple of trumpets. A distinctive um, decorative element of this group is this sort of braided guilloche border, which you can see around the edge of the breastplate. And a number of other items in the Royal Armouries collections and elsewhere feature this same decorative border. And you can indeed, you can see it here on the gorget. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that all of these pieces would have been worn together as one particular armor. But what it does show is that they all came from the same place. They were most likely decorated uh, by the same person. Now, as to who decorated it, we actually have quite a good idea. Uh, in Antwerp at the time, the Collert family were um, a large family of copper plate engravers. And we know from other pieces of armor from this group, such as from the Metropolitan Museum in New York, that the Collert family was involved in decorating this group. The most likely person is Adrian Collert, but unfortunately, because the piece in the Metropolitan Museum is only signed Collert, we don't know for definite that that's who decorated the breastplate, but it seems highly likely. So we have some additional evidence that these pieces were made in Antwerp. Now, unfortunately, we don't really know a lot about the armourers of Antwerp. More research needs to be done in that area. However, there's a very similar breastplate at the Middle Temple in London, which has a figure of Belgica in a strapwork cartouche on the front of the breastplate. We also have another gorget, which is in the Royal Armouries collection, which features the arms of Antwerp emblazoned on the front. So we can be pretty sure that these were made there.
So of course, a highly decorated breastplate or armour like this wasn't available to ordinary soldiers of the period. You had to have quite a lot of money to be able to commission something like this. And somebody like Sir Philip Sidney or his brother Robert would have been able to do that. For the majority of soldiers though, they would have worn something a lot plainer. It might still evoke the fashionable peas card shape of the period, but it's certainly not going to be as highly decorated as this. Now, wearing something like this on the battlefield means you're really going to stand out, but that's the point. You want to show not only your men that you are there and with them, but you want to show your status through the armour as well. And if the enemy take note of that, well, that's all well and good. So this breastplate, along with the other associated elements of the snails and dragonflies group, is unfortunately not on display. It's normally kept in our stores here in Leeds. So this has been a great opportunity to bring it out and actually talk through some of the decoration and history behind it. And if you'd like to find out more, then you can go on our website, on our online catalogue, where there'll be further details of armour of this group. The Royal Armouries is a charity. If you're able to donate, there'll be a link in the description below this video. Please do come and visit our three sites here in Leeds, but also at the Tower of London and Fort Nelson. Uh, subscribe to the channel for more interesting videos and thank you for watching.